Yeah, I, I graduated here in 2001. Uh, it took me six years to get there. I signed out to, uh, to travel as well. I actually started here in 1995, so um, I, have, I have great memories. I love coming back to Galway, even though I don't do it half enough. Um, just going to tell you a little bit about myself, what I'm doing today, um, and how I got there, and uh, some of the successes, some tips maybe, and some of the lessons I learned along the way. Um, when I was putting together the presentation, I, I thought I'd be really innovative and do a, a Prezi rather than a PowerPoint. Um, and then somebody told me when I arrived that, that actually somebody else used exactly the same template. Uh, so I wasn't all that innovative, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, Trouble, right? <laughs> so, if I can start with my roots, roots of the tree. Uh, so, I'm a Corkman, um, proud Corkman at that. I've been living in Dublin for 15 years, but uh, definitely not a dope. Um, I come from a very large family, seven kids, and uh, amazingly, none of us are in the same business now, even though we're all grown up. Um, so, uh, people doing anything from politics to making sandwiches, uh, and myself in the hotel business, and my brother working in RTE, um, so lots and lots of different things, there's a doctor thrown in there as well, and, uh, and a lawyer and so on. So, um, very active family, um, I did pay for my parents, um, mum and dad, uh, always doing things, always taking us different places and so on, so I, 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 would, I would have no shame in saying I had a very privileged upbringing, um, very, very fortunate, had some great opportunities. Uh, I'm now married uh, to Gemma and uh, three sons, so I guess if I look back at what's changed since I graduated, um, well I have no hair, uh, so that can tell you a little bit about some of the stresses and of, of uh, raising a family and, and trying to get on the career ladder and so on and so forth. Um, so education, uh, I went to uh, primary school in Cork and grew up in the countryside and uh, had a very normal upbringing which was great and then went to boarding school for six years uh, and then ended up at GMIT. I was the only member of my family not to go to college in Cork so it was a big adventure um, I knew somebody who'd been to college in Galway and they told me that it was a lovely city except it rains all the time and I, uh, unfortunately it turned out to be true. Uh, I have lots of great memories of uh, cycling my bicycle from Salt Hill back to Renmore uh, sometimes with passengers on my, on my crossbar as well, um, so I have great, great memories uh, from Galway. Um, some of my passions, uh, definitely have an eye for detail. Uh, I've always been a little bit uh, retentive when it comes to um, uh, preparing my work, um, being tidy, those sort of things. But actually, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a trait that I have that has actually really stood to me, it, particularly in the business that I'm in now, uh, being in the five-star hotel business. Um, because it is all about the little details, and so that really, really is a great thing to have. Um, I'm very interested in people. Um, you know, I, I was originally going to go to art college, and I <coughs> um, was quite, quite a, quite a dab hand with a paintbrush and a, and a pencil. Uh, but I kind of realised that I wasn't, a, I wasn't an Arnold da Vinci. I, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't think I was the best I could be uh, in that field. So I asked myself, what, what, what would I like to do when I left school? And one thing that always came back to me was people and how I enjoy being around people and enjoy uh, listening to people and learning, learning from them. So definitely a passion of mine. Uh, and then uh, more recently, um, I get a great kick out of finding talent and uh, trying to develop it and spending time with young people and so on. So that's, that's one little part of my job that I just love today. Um, so this is what I do today. Um, I've been with Four Seasons since 2003. Uh, I've had a little bit of a sabbatical, uh, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, but uh, I, I'm going from, uh, I suppose, listening to Paul and, and um, probably some of the more creative people on the team, uh, where the environment is maybe uh, very, very dynamic and lots of opportunities around. Um, Four Seasons is quite a structured organization. Um, we have 92 hotels around the world. Um, we're growing quite quickly, but, um, but still very conservative as an organization. Um, <clears throat> but it's measured. And I think one of the things that I would say about working for a company like Four Seasons is that uh, it's all about details, it's all about consistency, and it's all about um, backing up a reputation that maybe we've built over, over the years. Um, and and it's, it's everyone that works there that maintains that and, and drives it forward. So 
Um, so from a career point of view, I've had to be very patient. Um, uh, I uh, worked at various different levels, and today as a, a director of rooms, and um, now at food and beverage, I just um, was fortunate. I was promoted on Monday, so I, I'm now looking after food and beverage for, for the hotel as well. So all in all, um, I oversee 245 staff, uh, turnover of about 19 or 20 million. Um, it sounds really daunting, but you know something, um, over the years, you just sort of, you're, you're prepared, if you're, if you're open to it, you're prepared to take on a lot more responsibility as the years go by, and it doesn't feel like a big shock when you suddenly find yourself doing, doing that. Um, so, um, I've just written at the bottom the golden rule, and I might talk a little bit about the end, but it's, it's something that um, drew me to the company from the very beginning. Um, Isidore Shark, who is the founder of Four Seasons, uh, um, uses the golden rule as, as a mantra for the company and how we should act and behave around one another. Um, so in effect, it's, you know, you treat each other as you like to be treated. And uh, I know that sounds like an old cliche, but I think, it, I think it's a great lesson for life as well. And uh, I have found um, something that uh, is part of my makeup and, uh, and it certainly has helped, us, helped me get to where I am today as well. So, so where did I start? Uh, destination management. Um, those who don't know what that means, it's uh, effectively selling Ireland, uh, selling the destination. Um, so I, out of college, I, uh, funny enough, I didn't get into the hotel business straight away, even though that was my training. Um, I was, uh, I think around that time, maybe, maybe a year or two before I graduated, hotel management, uh, sorry, uh, event management and destination management was kind of the buzz thing that was going on in Ireland in, in the tourism sector. Um, so I spent um, my first sort of 18 months to two years in that field, uh, which in hindsight uh, was a great thing because I got to um, see what Ireland had to offer, uh, particularly to overseas travellers coming into Ireland. I uh, spent a lot of time pre um, preparing itineraries for overseas groups coming into Ireland, for individual travellers, for tour groups and so on. So I spent an awful lot of time getting in and out of different hotels, uh, checking out tours, restaurant offerings, um, basically everything that was on offer um, for a tourist coming to Ireland or for a business uh, person coming to Ireland. So I think it, it was a really good foundation block for me um, in terms of my, my, my further development in the field. So um, I, the, the event management too, which was pr probably not as relevant to me today, probably one of the most enjoyable things I did. Um, I worked a lot on sets and with musicians and with um, you know, designers and different things like that. So maybe some, some of the things that are in common with you guys. Um, but uh, just great fun, got a great kick out of it. And, uh, and the event management side of it was, was, was really, really great. Um, so then I suppose if I could compartmentalize my career, I had, a, I had an early stage in my career in sales and marketing as well. So I won't go through too much of all, all the details, but effectively in the contact <coughs> group. And then latterly with Four Seasons, um, I spent a lot of time traveling. Uh, I was fortunate shortly after I joined uh, uh, Conrad to spend quite a bit of time in Europe and the UK. So I got to see what was going on there and selling Ireland, if you like, uh, to, to uh, markets in, in those countries. And then when I joined Four Seasons later on, um, apart from being a corporate sales manager, I then went and looked after the Northern, North American uh, leisure sector. So I found myself in places like Atlanta and the American Express call centers, which you know, a thousand people on the floor all taking phone calls from the American Express card holders, booking hotels and so on. So just a fascinating insight for me um, uh, into, that, into that whole side of our business. Because you see your business coming in through the internet, through the phone, um, uh, and you wonder where it all comes from. But it's from these, quite often it's from these call centers uh, and, and other places. So, And then on, on a different side of it, you know, I spent time visiting uh, tour operators and, and luxury travel agents in places like Boston and um, you know over in Los Angeles uh, and people who you know manage to, um, holidays for high net worth individuals and, and pop bands and all sorts of stuff. So just a very 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 interesting time in my career. Um, and then uh, as referred to earlier, the, the hell raising eighteen months. Um, I was very fortunate. I remember it well because I was. We were expecting our first child, and I happened to be in Chicago on a sales trip um, with Four Seasons at the time. And I, I took a phone call from a friend in Cork uh, who happened to be an architect. Um, and this was, it would have been around, uh, what did I say, 2005, so kind of 
it would have been the height of the construction boom, you could say. Um, and I found myself getting involved with two brothers from Kildare who wanted to have this vision for a, a golf resort and hotel <coughs> in Cork. And uh, I, we were obviously living in Dublin at the time, and I thought it would be great fun to go back to my hometown and, and open this hotel. Um, it was a 50 million euro project, so it wasn't small, and I was only 28 at the time. And uh, as I said, I was sitting in my hotel room in Chicago and I took the call. And um, within a month, I had signed a contract and I was on my way out of Four Seasons and heading out on this adventure. Um, you know, <clears throat> when, when an opportunity like that comes along, you just can't say no to it. And, and I think apart from the, the flattery of being given that sort of responsibility, um, you get a chance to exercise your confidence and you get a chance to, um, to take a risk, I suppose. Um, looking back now with the benefit of hindsight, uh, it's not that I wouldn't have done it, but I think any advice I could give to somebody who happens to be fortunate enough to have something like that happen to them, I would always say to, to somebody who's young, um, think a step ahead. Uh, think about what you're going to do after that job, perhaps. And I know that sounds really conservative, but for me, um, I found myself at the end of that 18 months, because um, it didn't end very well. Um, we talked about failing briefly and failing slowly. Um, in my case, um, I got caught up in something, a uh, legal battle, let's just call it, um, between an owner and a, and a builder, which was just way above my head, and uh, I, I had to get out. It, was, um, it became very, very stressful, and I didn't realize the impact it was having on my family and so on, and we had our second son by then too. So, um, so in the, between the Jigs and the Reels, I ended up going back to Four Seasons um, into an operational role. Um, I, as I said, I wouldn't have changed anything, but uh, I... I learned an awful lot from it, but um, some of the lessons I've learned, I've just written down a few things which I thought might be useful for people who are watching. Um, in, in the time I've had, and I've been out of college now for uh, 12, 13 years, um, the things that I've, I've found that whole way in my career to date, um, uh, have good mentors and role models and, and latch onto them and learn from them. Um, I've been very fortunate to have had uh, a number of people that have been important players in, in what I do and decisions that I've made in my life, um, and I stick close to them. Um, and, and some of the mentors have taught me the next line, which is um, imitate success and learn from failures. So uh, one of my mentors is a, he's a RBP for the company in London. Uh, he's, uh, he's just got so much experience, like it's quite intimidating talking to him. But he told me, he told me one good thing a few years ago, which was, um, in the course of your career, if you can just copy, copy the good things that you see in people and try and avoid the, the negative things that you see in people, you, you start to become like a sponge and you start to um, develop yourself as a very rounded individual. And it's a very good lesson for me, so I've, I've set about doing that. And learn about yourself by exposure to challenges uh, that stretch you. So, uh, again, like, like, like Paul had mentioned, um, you know, often opportunities will come up uh, in the course of your working day, and it's really important to put yourself forward for things. Um, you know, our company, as I kind of mentioned at the start, it, it has had a tendency to be quite conservative. Uh, in the past few years, um, I was part of a project called uh, Blue Water. Uh, I didn't mention on the slide, but Blue Water is um, it's a global in, um, innovation movement uh, for Four Seasons. Um, I probably shouldn't be telling you about it because it's an internal thing, but, uh, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, we, 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 um, at the very highest level in the company, they appointed a, a vice president for innovation, a guy called Christopher Hunsberger, uh, who's a, he was a, a general manager himself um, with the company. Uh, and he, he's one of the most creative people I've ever met. Um, he, he's now driving this thing called Blue Water around the world. We have a, we have a portal that we can sign in and out of. Uh, to share ideas about what we're doing in different, different hotels around the world. It's made our company very small uh, and, and an intimate kind of a community uh, and a very creative one now. And uh, we just realized that having come through a recession and the hotel business has changed forever. You know, it's, it's become far more competitive than it's ever been. Um, Four Seasons is, is, is great, don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's not the best in every city that, it is it, that it's in. And that, that's our mantra, you know, that we want to be the best in every city that we're, we're, we're located. But, but we know, we're not naive, we know that there's, there's a lot of other great companies out there. 
and so we just felt we needed to push the boundaries of what was possible within five star uh, environments. Um, we also know that we needed to deformalize. Um, you know, only very recently uh, in Dublin, um, we, we've seen a, a big decline over the last sort of 18 months of people coming into our restaurant. And uh, one of the reasons for that is they just don't have time to spend two hours over a long lunch or over a dinner if they want something quick. But they want it nice and they want the details to be there, but they don't want it to be formal. Um, and they don't want to be intimidated by, uh, by the environment that they're in. So that's just one, one sort of example of what's going on in the industry. And I think you'll see it everywhere. Like people give out that we don't put table linen on, our, on all of our tables now. But like for everyone that gives out, there's about 100 people that are delighted as well. So you know, we're moving away from silverware to you know, um, something that's a little bit less intimidating. And then, of course, the cost factors come into it as well. And what are the savings can be made from all that? Uh, all of that. So, uh, so it's, it's it's tectonic in terms of the, the shift in, in, in our business at the moment. Um, recessions, university for life, college for life. Um, it really is a great um, sort of time for innovation. It's a great time for thinking about what you're doing and looking at yourself. And uh, I, I don't think it, I don't think it really matters what business you're in nowadays. Um, if, you, if you can't, if you're not prepared to look at yourself in the mirror and say, well. If these are the good things I'm doing, these are the, these are the things that I, that I can do better, you're just going to get left behind. Um, so it's really a really great time um, for us. Hard and all as it is, it's a good time. Um, so yeah, we talk about embracing change. Um, and then a, a good one here, um, surrounding yourself with people who are, in your mind, possibly better than you are. I, I, I've met so many people, um, even in the short time I'm in business, that, that have that believe that they're, that they're best. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. People can be confident. But I think, um, above all else, the hotel business is a team effort. It's not about individuals. Um, some people are great fun people. Some people are great working in the background. Um, you've got process people. You've got big thinkers. But I think it's what, what makes something successful is, is the combination of a lot. And it's like a cocktail, you know, great cocktails. They, they, they sometimes need a mixer to make it all work or make it bubble. But um, uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the ingredients are equally important. Um, I, again, I think it's probably valid for all, all businesses, but especially in hotel business. Um, last of all, um, I think I, I, I certainly wouldn't be in Four Seasons if I didn't enjoy it. Um, I, uh, I think it's a fabulous company, and, uh, and, uh, and what it stands for, I think, is very much aligned to my own, my own life and my own thinking about life and, and, and about business. Um, I wouldn't be there this long, and like to be honest with you, I wasn't in the job for any longer than about 18 months before I joined Four Seasons, and I found myself being there nearly nine years, uh, all, all added up. So, um, you know, I, I think you have to love what you do. Um, hard as it can be some days, I think if you, if you love it, um, you'll, you'll find a way to get through the tough times uh, to, to success. So, um, tips for graduates coming out of um, the tourism and arts uh, faculty. Um, I think, uh, you know, be patient. Um, be, be a little bit careful about who you're going to go and work for. Um, th there are business, uh, probably more than most, was really, really uh, badly affected by the, by the decline in the property sector. A lot of our hotels in Ireland are sadly, they're propped up by banks. Uh, and frankly, banks that can't really afford to be propping them up. Um, so th there's, a, there's a certain amount of artificial, um, artificial bi business being done in our sector at the moment, which I, I feel very strongly about. Um, I think it's a matter of time before some of these places will close down. And I think, frankly, we're a little bit over, there's a bit of an oversupply of hotel rooms in Ireland at the moment. Dublin is coming back strong, but it's no different from the property sector. It will tend to happen there first. Um, but I, I really feel for those those projects and those like my, the one in Blarney, which I referred to earlier, is a classic example. It's been bought and sold about ten times since I was there. Uh, it's still going, but um, but it, it's it's not it's not a sustainable business model. Um, so as a student coming out of the, the, the tourism and arts faculty, in, in, if, if you want to get into the hotel business, do a little bit of research first. Um, be prepared to take a job that may not pay as well, um, but 
think a little bit longer term. Um, we have a wonderful graduate program, uh, in, in a bit like Coleman was referring to earlier on in his sector. Uh, we have a, um, that's a nice presentation, we have a, we have a roots and a branches program. Um, they're MIT programs, um, uh, managers in training. Uh, they typically, the, the roots program, which is, which is designed for graduates coming straight out of college. Um, sorry, let's go back to home here. The Roots program is designed for students coming directly out of college, um, and it's a it's a 12 to 18 month program, uh, which will take uh, take somebody right through the various different departments in the hotel. We tend to try and do it as a rooms project or as a food and beverage project. So rooms being you know housekeeping, front office, guest services, and spa perhaps, uh, and then F and B is you know anything from banqueting to room service to restaurant, bar, lounge, all those all those areas. Um, and then the, the branches one is designed for graduates who may have had a number of years in, in the industry already. They may have lost their way a little bit and they need to kind of get back on the, get back on the track. Uh, so we've taken in some branches, um, MIT students, uh, you know, we, that's actually a, a three to six month uh, program. And it can be great for maybe a mature student who perhaps went back to college after having started their career already. Um, so there's, there's great options out there, and I think, as like Coleman mentioned earlier on, for somebody who's ambitious, it's worth making a sacrifice to get into a program like that because you will be in management quicker than you would if you probably came in at nine levels. So, um, so that definitely food for thought. Uh, I know there are some students in GMIT today um, that are currently applying for positions at Four Seasons. So. I wish them well, and uh, I, I, I'm pushing our hotel um, to try and get more graduates from GMIT. We work with all the hotel schools in Ireland, so, um, so yeah, more power to them. And we've had some great results, some great candidates come through. So, um, thank you uh, for having me here. And, uh,